so what I think I'll do is I'll start with uh, the superficial branch of the peroneal nerve and then the deep branch. So if you could roll that way. So I'm going to look here. Let's see, and you're taking a picture from there. Okay. So I'm going to be looking like this. So remember the superficial branch is going to come out between the anterior and peroneal compartments about nine centimeters up from the fibular tip. So I know just it's going to be in this area to start with. So what I'm going to do is just look at for the two compartments uh, to start out with. <coughs> yeah, thanks. If, I, if I'm not sure which compartment I'm looking at, I can start down at the ankle. <coughs> we know that posterior to the fibula is the peroneal compartment as I come up. Here's the peroneal compartment, which means in front of that, the anterior compartment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be looking in this fascial plane here for the superficial branch to be coming out of the, of the fascial plane there. And you can see right away, right here, the fascicular appearance, the honeycomb appearance, that's the superficial branch. If I go proximal, you'll see it here. And it gets difficult to see because it's diving in. It's right there. It blends in with the muscle. But when I go more distally, you'll see it right here between the two compartments under this fascia. And right, you'll see it in just a moment. It's going to pop out of that fascia, right about there. So now it's out of the fascia. If I back up, it's under the fascia. And you can see it's nine centimeters, just the way I anticipated. I didn't measure, but you know it's about that distance. So that's the where you'd see entrapment. Now, of course, you can look at it in long axis, but you know that would show if it were enlarged. Um, but when you look at these tiny nerves in long axis, proximal to the left, they almost look like, like, a, like a fascial layer, especially when they're, when they're uh, normal. I mean, good luck in seeing that. Now, if it's abnormal, it'll jump out. That's why we rely on the short axis. So that's the superficial branch of the peroneal nerve. Now, the deep branch comes out actually anterior. So how we find that is if we look at the level of the ankle joint like this. And if we look at the level of the tibia, which is here, and here we see the anterior tibial artery, and that will continue on distally as the dorsalis pedis. But what do we see right next to it? That's the deep branch of the peroneal nerve. So those are two landmarks of where you can see it. If you go proximal, you'll see the nerve go to the lateral part, sorry, medial. So it starts up medial to the anterior tibial artery. As I go distal, it's going to move over and jump over lateral to it. And where that comes into play is if you're injecting, let's say, um, the midfoot, keep in mind the branches of this deep peroneal nerve. You can see them arborize. Here's a branch, there's a branch, there's a branch. You get the idea. That's why people with large osteophytes from midfoot osteoarthritis can have pain if it's on one of those, pushing on one of those nerves. Uh, okay, so let's look at the sural nerve since the lateral ankle's here. So this is the fibula, and here's the Achilles. And the sural nerve will be right between the two. So what I'm going to do is put the transducer between the Achilles and the peroneal tendons right at the level of the fibula like this. So what we see here on the right, peroneal tendons, here's the Achilles. So in the middle of this fat pad, right in the center, we're going to see the sural nerve here. Sorry, more gel right there. And the lesser saphenous vein will be right next to it. So here's the sural nerve, lesser saphenous vein. So that's where you find that nerve. So for all these nerves, I have one point where I can find it. Then you can trace them up and down and go crazy if you want. But at least you have a starting point. Let's go to the tibial nerve. We're going to look at the inside of your ankle. Make sure you don't fall off here. OK, that's good. So I'm going to look at the torsal tunnel here. I'm going to put the transducer 
um, behind the medial malleolus like this. I'm going to put posterior to the right side of the screen. And what we see here, tibia is posterior, plexiduratorum longus, artery two veins, tibial nerve, FHL, muscle and tendon. So here we can see uh, the tibial nerve. Now, when, as I go distal, this little branch already comes off. That's the medial calcaneal branch, and it's going to come down. And it's going to come down here and arborize. So that's already come off. As I go up, you see that. Meanwhile, if you look here at the tibial nerve, that's going to bifurcate into the medial lateral plantar branches. Go back here. It's already starting to arborize here into two different branches. Medial and lateral branches. Medial and lateral. I'm going to switch. I'll just keep this. Usually I go to a hockey stick, but I like the larger field of view on these demos so you can get the big picture. Um, so basically, the medial lateral branches. I'm going to try to find Baxter's nerve, and this is where it gets warm, warm on stage because <laughs> it's not easy. And, I, and I'm still struggling to find it in my everyday practice. So what I'm doing is looking for the first branch off of the lateral plantar nerve, and perhaps this is it, probably. Um, I would have to track back and forth. But again, you want to look between the quadratus plantae and the abductor halysis as another landmark. Let me go down to that, the muscle group there. So medial, lateral, I think this is it. I got lucky, I found it. <laughs> but the muscle planes help, medial, it's the first branch off the lateral. Yeah, that's it. OK. <laughs> Usually what I do is I go, it's right here, see? It's, there it is. That's a, cute, that's a sure sign of, <laughs> of, of lack of confidence is when I keep moving, and I never stop moving. So here you can see the, the, the supernumerary, what, no, kidding. All right, let's move on to the other parts of the knee. Oh, let's do Morton Aroma. Let's start with that. Then we'll move up to the knee. Good. So if you can just lay flat with your toes going straight up. So I'm going to start looking at the plantar aspect like this. Media will be to the right. And what I'm going to do is boost the gain a bit, decrease the frequency because the fat pad of the foot attenuates the sound beam. So here are the metatarsal heads. There are the sesamoids here of the first, second, third. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just identify the fourth inner space. And what I'm going to do is push with my finger. To see my finger pushing from the other side, so without me pushing, it's hard to see that area. With pushing, I can see it better. See how it compresses it? It still looks heterogeneous, which is a challenge. So I'm going to look here and get my bearings. OK, I'm in the, th the third inner space. Now for step two, I'm going to turn long axis. So I want to be at the level of the metatarsal heads. I'll put distal to uh, the right side of the screen. So this is the third digit. That's the fourth. So in between those metatarsal heads, right there, I'll go to this one here. So this is my finger pushing here from the, from the dorsal aspect. I'm trying to make these tissues less heterogeneous. You can see the challenge there, because a tiny neuroma would be hard to see. If 
So like the cases I showed, you, you should see a well-defined hypochoic area um, on this long axis view, which I don't see. Then step three will be the Mulder maneuver. So if I come back to the same space, media will be on the right side of the image. And what I'm going to do is center with the metatarsal heads, and I'm going to squeeze from side to side. And you'll see the normal heterogeneous tissue, fibro fatty tissue, moving in a planar direction like that. So that's normal. If you had a neuroma, it would be more obvious as it would be located in that tissue that's moving more plantar. So that's why I look for a March in neuroma. All right, let's move and look at the common peroneal nerve. So maybe what we'll do is, maybe I'll have you lay in your stomach. Okay, so I'll be looking here, at, and I'll look at the sciatic nerve, the tibial nerve, and the common peroneal nerve. So what I can do is I can start right in the back of the knee, and if I use that as my starting point, my key bone landmarks are the hemocondyles. Here is lateral, here is medial. So we, if we're right in the center of the knee, we know where the tibial nerve is. It's located right here. Uh, artery, vein, nerve, AVN, the nerve is the more superficial. It's right, right here. And note what I'm doing here when, when I'm toggling the transducer. Because right there it looks really more honeycomb-like. If I oblique the transducer, the, the echogenic areas become anisotropic and hypoechoic. So you really want to toggle the transducer, that's the term I use when I rock it this way, <laughs> to bring out the echogenic layers surrounding the fascicles. And you see the structure that's right next to it? That's the common peroneal nerve. That's the tibial nerve. And I just saw that by, by toggling. If I go more proximal, they become united, and now we have the sciatic nerve. If I go distal, now the common peroneal nerve is over here. It almost looks like muscle, so what I'm going to do is toggle again. Let me decrease the gain a little. And you can appreciate these little fascicles here. And the muscle in front of it, that's the biceps femoris. So here is the common peroneal nerve again. Right behind the biceps femoris, there's the fibula, there's the common peroneal nerve. And then it goes around. Un, here it's going underneath the peroneus longus. Okay. So again, common peroneal nerve. Common peroneal nerve here, here. Tibial nerve is coming into view. It's going to unite. And there's the sciatic nerve. And if you look at the sciatic nerve in long axis, look how it almost looks like a tendon. That's why the short axis is so key uh, when looking at these nerves. So we got about three minutes. Um, should I show the lateral femur cutaneous? Is that okay? Okay, let's have you roll back onto your back again. Okay, we're gonna look at your hip area. So maybe pull this down just a little bit more. Like that. You okay like that? Okay, so there are different ways of looking for the lateral femur cutaneous nerve. The area where it's entrapped would be at the level of the anterior superior iliac spine and the inguinal ligament. 
So I often start right there. And what I want to do is scan back and forth and toggle the transducer and try to find what looks like a nerve going underneath. And basically like this. And right there we see it actually. It's my lucky day. Um, so when it's abnormal, it's thickened and hypochloric, it jumps out. So where this is going underneath the inguinal ligament is uh, where we see entrapment and where I would inject it. But you can see by toggling, that's what made it turn bright. I could do this and it just disappears. By toggling, I really aggressively do that to see the speckled appearance of uh, the, the lateral femur cutaneous nerve. And what normally happens with this nerve, distally it courses medial to lateral over the sartorius, which is here. So a lot of times you can see the little fascicles coming over, like here, to reconstitute to be the, the nerve trunk under the inguinal ligament. Another trick is that if you go more distally, there's usually a fat triangle that everyone has at the lateral margin of the sartorius. There always seems to be one fascicle sitting in that fat triangle here. So let's say you're having trouble seeing it. You can say, okay, let's go down. There's the fat triangle. There's the, one of the fascicles. Then if you follow that up, follow that up, it's reconstituting with other things, other nerve fascicles, and then it can come up, and then you can see it again. So the trick is start at the inguinal ligament, Number two, look over the sartorius, going medial lateral. And third, look in the fat triangle. I've seen one case where this uh, lateral femur cutaneous nerve went under the sartorius. I had one case where it went through the sartorius. It can actually go around the, iliac, the anterior superior iliac spine. So there is variability. Uh, so that's why it's challenging. But that's how I approach the lateral femur cutaneous nerve.